Welcome back, everybody. We've been talking about rotational kinematics and mentioning displacement around the edge of a circle that is angular displacement and angular velocity. And just like in regular uh, one-dimensional linear kinematics, we not only have displacement, we not only have the, the velocity, but we also have acceleration. And now we have angular acceleration around the edge of a circle. And that's going to be um, our analog to regular acceleration in, um, in 1D kinematics. Uh, it is very much similar. It's still a measure of velocity over time. And so our, our two boxed off equations right here, um, our average acceleration is, our, um, angular acceleration, is our angular velocity, our delta omega over the amount of time. And of course, this right here tells us that as the time incre increment gets smaller and smaller, it helps us to find what the actual um, angular velocity is at that uh, those little time increments right there. So this is kind of like for t uh, finding your instantaneous acceleration at any one point. But um, you'll notice that it looks kind of like an A for an uh, acceleration, but it's, um, it's a little bit odd looking. This is a lowercase Greek alpha. So we call this alpha right here. And I usually wind up drawing it looking like a little fish, sort of, just kind of like that. Not very good, all right, but that's usually my, um, uh, my notation for alpha. And it is very very analogous to acceleration with uh, linear kinematics. It's a change in your um, velocity, your angular velocity, over time. Now, whereas with 1D kinematics, one-dimensional linear kinematics, it would have been um, meters per second squared. Remember, with circles, we don't have a set distance because every circle is a different size, but we measure them in radians, radians per second squared, and that's how we measure angular uh, acceleration. All right, so is our change in um, a velocity positive or negative? Well, that will determine um, what the angular acceleration is. Um, you'll recall that if we go around a circle counterclockwise, that's a, um, that's a positive change in angular, not a very good theta right there, th uh, change in angular displacement. And going around a circle this way would be a negative change in angular displacement. So that would indicate a uh, positive and negative angular velocity, and therefore a positive or negative um, angular acceleration. Just like with velocity, look at this right here. We talked about this before. If your omega and your alpha have the same sign, your angular speed increases. All right, what does that mean? Well, that means if you are moving, you're, you have a velocity that's positive, and in a positive acceleration, you're only going to accelerate and become more positive. All right, so the angular speed increases. But if they have different signs, and we mentioned this before, if you have a certain velocity, you say you've got a, a positive velocity, but you've got a negative acceleration, well, that means you're going to slow down. You're going to approach zero, very much like uh, we talked about in one-dimensional kinematics. All right, so this kind of this kind of shows us right here. Again, once uh, I don't want to belabor this point too much, but if we have a velocity in this direction that's greater than zero, positive velocity and a positive acceleration, this thing is just going to speed up um, positively. Similarly, if we have a, a negative velocity and a negative acceleration, it will speed up, but it will speed up in the negative direction. However, if they're opposing one another, a negative velocity but a positive acceleration, or a positive velocity and a negative acceleration, that's going to slow down. The, the, uh, the spinning object is going to, uh, going to slow down and, and approach zero. Like I said before, very much like with 1D kinematics. So let's take this, um, this knowledge that it's very similar to 1D kinematics and let's apply it to our example 10-4. All right, so we've got a windmill that was, that was previously turning at uh, 20, or sorry, 2.1 radians per second. So that is our angular velocity right there. Let me try that again. Angular velocity omega. And it begins to slow down with a constant acceleration, or you might say a deceleration of 0.45 radians per second squared. So that is, here, I'll, I'll draw it kind of down here. That is our negative alpha. All right, so the acceleration is in the, is in the, uh, um, is in the negative, and so it's going to approach, approach zero. So how long does it take? Well, we know what that means. How long does it take? That's time for the windmill to come to a complete stop. Well, this is our initial 
angular velocity right there. What's our final angular velocity? Let's go, oops, Olivia, I, I was writing it out, I was thinking it was zero. It's zero, right? It's our omega final, and that's going to be zero radians per second. All right, this should sound familiar to you. Initial velocity, acceleration, time, final velocity. Have we compared all those things in one-dimensional kinematics? <clears throat> we sure have, and we have uh, an equation from 1D kinematics that looks kind of like this. V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Well, we're not going to use those exact units right there, but we're going to use the rotational analog to them, and that means we're going to have our final rotational velocity, or angular velocity, equals our initial angular velocity plus our acceleration, our little funny fish um, alpha uh, symbol, times time. And then we can certainly solve for time. Time being W final minus, oh, I said W, sorry. Sometimes, because it looks like a W, it's actually an omega. Um, but our angular velocity final minus our angular velocity initial over our acceleration. Let's not forget that our, accelerate, uh, sorry, our initial angular velocity is 2.1 radians per second. And our initial, or I should say our, um, uh, well, let's, let's write this, our final velocity, we know that. Final velocity equals zero. I wrote that up uh, there already. But um, our acceleration is going to be in the negative. It's going to be, or at least it's going to be negative whatever uh, sign you've given your velocities. I give my sign, my velocity is a positive sign, and, uh, and therefore our acceleration is going to have to be negative. So negative 0.45 radians per second, per second, or radians per second squared. You know, it's funny, I didn't, uh, I kind of, I underlined this, I meant to draw it through as a slash, but uh, you know that means the radians per second. All right, let's just put them all together and solve for our amount of time it takes for this object to, um, well, this windmill to come to a complete stop. So it's our final zero radians per second minus, um, what was our initial, 2.1 radians per second, all divided by <clears throat> our, uh, our acceleration, which is negative 0 0.4 five radians per second per second and that's going to give us our time. The time which I calculate to be 4.6 no, 4.7 seconds. 4.7 seconds and there's our time. So we've seen our very first um, close analogy to one-dimensional kinematics actually using one of those equations uh, for one-dimensional kinematics that, uh, that applies very similarly to um, uh, rotational kinematics. We just need to use uh, the rotational, you might say, uh, uh, analogies or, or, the, or the analogs um, and put in the, the, the correct values. All right, so that's example 10.4, finding our, uh, our time. Um, and you know what? Actually, I'm going to, that is example 10.4, but I'm going to go one more slide just to show you all the other comparisons to um, one-dimensional kinematics, and then I'll finish out this video, and then we'll do another example in the next one. So this right here shows the very, very close parallels between rotational kinematics and one-dimensional kinematics. Here we have our displacement x being essentially the same thing as theta, whereas x, you're being displaced in a straight line. Theta, you're being displaced uh, an angle around a circle. Okay, our velocity, meters per second becomes now radians per second. And so the V for velocity becomes um, our omega for uh, angular rotation. And of course, our acceleration becomes angular acceleration. And the A for acceleration becomes alpha, that lowercase a, lowercase uh, Greek a right there. But look at all the equations that we know from 1D kinematics. V final equals V initial plus acceleration times time. Uh, finding our displacement if we know uh, change in velocity and time. Finding our displacement if we know time, initial velocity, and acceleration. And finding our final velocity if we know initial velocity and acceleration and displacement. Look how well these, these match up. Angular velocity, 
It's funny, before I used to say V equals VI plus AT. Now I have to be careful. Omega equals Omega I plus Alpha T. Wow, that's going to be more of a mouthful. Um, but it matches up our displacement, our final displacement, or you might say our final position equals our initial position plus one half initial angular velocity plus final angular velocity times T. Here we have our displacement as a function of initial velocity and time and acceleration and our final angular velocity as a function of our initial angular velocity, acceleration, and angular displacement. So very, very close parallels to one-dimensional kinematics. And if you can, you can re remember those relationships, it should be an easy transition to uh, rotational kinematics. Just make sure to keep your symbols straight. Okay, well that is going to be it for this segment. Thanks for following along, and we'll pick up with an example in the next segment.